Welcome back to the PR Planning Cooking Show. In this episode, yes, we're still talking about socialization. More socialization. Yes, 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 much more. Well, actually, no, this is the last one. So I will not make you go through socialization anymore. Well, until I think of another thing that I want to tell you about socialization. Welcome to the PI Planning Cooking Show with Shane Harrison. Let's talk about what the primary objective of socialization is. The primary objective of socialization is the team's understanding. The team has to understand the features that you are asking them to plan. They need to ensure that they understand those features so well that they are confident they can take these into PI planning and they can plan the complete feature within the PI. That's what socialization is about. And it's about them believing that, not you, not me, and not the guy behind the camera that you cannot see. It doesn't matter who else thinks they have enough information. It's really about the team understanding. So how do we do that? Well, we've done the big event. We've told everybody what they need to see and what they need to know. And now we're going into the team. And as you go into the team, you want a small, you're, you've got a smaller group. And why do you have a smaller group? Because you're going to get more questions. What does more questions mean? It means better understanding, right? So we want more questions. So you go into that small group and you're going to present the features. What are we going to do before we go into that conversation? We're going to create a thing that I like to call a cheat sheet. It is not a checklist. It is a cheat sheet. It is used to stimulate conversation, not as an alternative to conversation. So the best thing to do is the PO and Scrum Master work with the team separately, and they create a list of all the questions they've ever asked about features. And they look at the features that have caused them problems in the past and think, hmm, what would I have liked to have known beforehand? And they put this on the cheat sheet. Now that is something everybody should have in the team. That way, if they're wondering, gee, I'm not quite sure I understand this. There's something missing, but I don't know. They can go through that cheat sheet and go, oh, we haven't asked about, you know, data. Where are we going to get the data from? Or things like that. So that cheat sheet is important. It's important that the team maintain that and that they update it every PI or refresh it. And yes, you can dump old questions if you want to. So who's in this session with the team? Well, before we talk about who's in it, I think I should forewarn you the number of sessions you're probably going to have, because that will sort of influence who's in there. You're typically going to have four, maybe five of these sessions. You're not looking for a one hit wonder. We are going to leverage the power of the subconscious mind, and we're going to make sure we give teams enough time to absorb and fully understand a feature and then ask the questions. So who are you going to take in? You're going to take your product manager, you're going to take your product analysts if you have them, possibly the BAs, you're definitely going to take architecture, and if you have data people in there who are providing a supporting function to the art and the teams, they will go in there as well. Anybody who's going to be needed to answer a question, it's really, really important. Because any question that you don't answer during the session, guess what, you gotta go away and find it anyway. So try to take the people in that will need to know. Occasionally, I've even seen business people in there being able to answer questions on the spot. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna approach this? Well, first of all, you, or rather the person who knows the most out of the feature, and that doesn't mean the PM. Just because the product manager is leading product management for this team or for this art, does not mean they know everything there is to know or the deepest detail about every feature. So if, it, if it's an architect, maybe it's an enabler, it could, it could be an architect, or a, a product analyst, they could know the most of the feature, they will lead the discussion. And what they'll start by doing is they'll go through the core problem or opportunity that this feature is trying to enable for the business, either solve a problem for the business or enable an opportunity. And they'll walk through that, and then the key from that point on is you start to ask the team questions. So if the, I'm assuming the team has been asking you questions already, 
but you get to a point where the team aren't asking any more questions now you start asking questions and guess what you can use that same cheat sheet and you can look through and think what elements here are relevant to this feature and then you can ask the team okay where are we getting the data from oh we don't know would you like to know sorry that's being a bit sarcastic but you know what i mean so you're going through there and you want to stimulate their thoughts the conversations you want team members to discuss this where are we going to get the data from do we have the business rules should we be creating a business rules engine what are we going to do how are we going to layer this so you've asked lots of questions they've answered lots of questions everybody knows everything they think they need to know about this feature what's the question you ask you say is this ready for planning the answer to that is no you do not ask that question Remember what I said earlier, we want to use the subconscious mind. So we're gonna have three, four, maybe five of these sessions. The first session of each feature, unless you think it's a super easy feature, should just be about gaining understanding. It is not about uh, getting commitment to plan it. It's about gaining understanding within the team it's about gaining understanding between the team and the product manager, the architect, the product analyst, and anyone else who needs to be there. So you ask the team, shall we move on to the next feature? So once you move on to the next feature, you go through the same process again until you run out of features in that session. Now in the first session, all you're gonna do is go through feature by feature by feature, presenting, discussing, them discussing, that's really good. You really, the more questions they ask each other, the better. You get double points for that. If we're gonna gamify this, for every question they ask you, you get one point. For every question that they ask each other and discuss together, you get five. Because that is them internalizing understanding of what's going on. And that's the magic of getting something done. No matter how well I understand it, that's not good enough. So between that session, we have actually discussed the feature and the next one, their subconscious mind will be chewing over what you've told them, chewing over what they understand. And then when you go back to the next session, you'll go back again to the top of the list and saying, okay, we covered this feature before, you know, this feature about the risk calculation for the bank optimization. Do we still fully understand it? And they'll go, yes. Then you start asking questions again. You go, well, did we create a business rule engine? Do we need to do this? Do we need to do that? If they can ask those questions, then they understand it. You would say, okay, what does the team think? Give, us, give me a fist of five of whether we can take this feature into PI planning. Only when they say, and that's the people who do the work, no PO, no scrum master, once they're giving you a four, or at least an average that is above a three and a half, half a thumb, half a fing uh, finger, sorry, you can cut it off there. But as long as you're getting above a 3.5 or really above a three, and there's no ones and twos in there, then you can say, okay, we'll take it forward. And then you keep moving through the features like that. And each time you go back to them, you're gonna go through the whole list and go, this one's okay, right? Because if somebody thinks of something between maybe the end of iteration three when you presented it and PI planning, you want them to ask that question because that question could be hiding or it could more importantly reveal a later problem. So stay focused on that. We want their understanding. And once they're giving you that four and a half, four and a half, that'd be interesting, or, or three and a half vote, then that's good and you're good to go. So there's another thing you should be aware of. There will be people in the world who have a vested interest in a particular feature going into planning. If you have that situation, everybody's job is to protect the team from that pressure. As a general rule, I recommend you do not take anything into planning where the team feels it cannot be executed safely or reliably or predictably. You can say to them, okay, if you're unsure about this one, please tell me the questions, but you can go in knowing this is going to be a stretch. I have had some rather unpleasant experiences with stretch, where the business has ignored the difference between stretch and committed. 
knowing what to stretch before you go in actually allows you to communicate to the business okay from our understanding the team is committing to planning these at this point some of these may become stretch but these ones are definitely stretch so you should not rely on their delivery that's the whole meaning of stretch yes but sometimes people don't really get that and you need to to uh, reinforce it quite a lot otherwise once the team's committed to it it's ready for planning give them time with the features though one of the things you can do if there's a large amount of uncertainty is to do a spike into a particular part i have found too much preparation is more destructive in many cases than not enough because you get teams where everything's planned already and then they can't collaborate between teams and they can't align things so anyway that's your socialization with the teams making sure they believe and they are certain they can deliver your features is what you want and it's their opinion nobody else's so that's the end of this episode of the pi planning cooking show it's been fun cooking for you this week and we'll be back next week with another great course so if you have any questions for us or if you have some suggestions i love to learn from you everything that i've been sharing with you today comes from people just like you who experiment and try things out like relentless improvement house of lean if you're a safe person relentless improvement anyway so feedback to us tell us what you're doing tell us what you're trying and how it's working out for you we can we will share it with the world or you can share it come on to the show if you're coming to the safe summit and share it with the world yourself no problem in fact joy for us if you do that and on the subject of the safe summit it's only mm, a month and a little bit to go now and we are going to be interviewing as many interesting people as we can find and we want to know who's interesting for you and we want to know the questions that you want answered do you want to know dean leffingwell's favorite color if you do let us know in the comments below if you want a particular person interviewed if you've looked at the agenda and go hey i want to know what that person thinks about this we will do our very best for you to bring them onto the show and ask them those questions so thanks again for watching the pi planning cooking show please subscribe and click on the bell so you get alarmed next time there's one up have a great week see you next week on the pi planning cooking show that's the pi planning cooking show with Shane Harrison.